every day something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Bahamians react to the end of the state of emergency in their country. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Monday 15th November 2021. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, now, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery mask. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. As the state of emergency comes to an end in the Bahamas, the people's reactions reflect one of cautious optimism. More in this eyewitness news item. So the emergency orders come to an end as of tonight. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, thank God. It's been a while. <laughs> That's how many individuals feel now that government is doing away with the emergency orders. This comes as the Davis administration is fulfilling one of its campaign promises, which was to abolish the country's state of emergency and enact new health rules to guide the country throughout the pandemic. And these residents assert that removing the orders was the right decision. I think it's great. I think that it's about time. I think that I didn't quite get the whole point of having curfews and lockdowns at this point in the country. Others feel as though removing the state of emergency was long overdue, further arguing that the country needed to return to some sense of normalcy. Life has to go on, and we also have to learn how to live with COVID. Whatever it takes to bring our country to a situation whereby we can restore to normalcy, we need to do it. Moving along, I guess this is something that had to happen, and you know, we're in a new world order, they call it. We're in the, this is the new norm. On the flip side, these residents argue that removing the orders is not a wise call. I think they should wait till next year. And why do you feel that way? Because people are too loose and COVID ain't going nowhere yet, which ain't going nowhere. And I feel like some of them are used as an opportunity to wild out, so to speak. Others are sending this caution. I hope that we still move with caution because COVID is still here. I hope you do it safely. You know, everybody do what they're supposed to do. That's the main thing. The country's state of emergency is expected to end tonight at midnight, and there will be new health rules to replace the emergency orders. Jose Etienne, Eyewitness News. Government of Barbados meet with stakeholders in the healthcare sector to get its rollout of safe zones right. Details in this Barbados Today News report. The president of the Barbados Dental Association, Dr. Vidya Armagan, today outlined a detailed plan to allow private sector entities to establish their own safe zones. To enter our safe zones, the businesses will have certain, uh, there's be certain requirements. So we're requiring, if you're in our safe zones, the businesses will have to have a security personnel at the gate or the entrance. They'll do like what they're doing right now. So we're not subverting the government initiatives. All of those stay in place. What the government has in place for sanitization and temperature checking and their health care codes in the kitchens and all that, those are all in place. We're not changing any of that. Those are excellent standards and we're adhering to those. We're just adding guidelines on top of that. So we're saying as you enter any of these safe zones, there's a security personnel and they're going to have several functions. They're going to do a sanitization. They're going to do the uh, temperature check. But they're also going to check your vaccine status at that point. Are you vaccinated, unvaxxed, or do you need to be tested to enter the facility? 
there's also going to be a requirement in our safe zones that you wear a medical mask. He disclosed that a website, BarbadasSafeZones.com, has already been launched and that local boutique hotel, the Sweetfield Manor, and a restaurant both located in the Upper Garrison area of the Bridgetown UNESCO Historic Area will be the first to sign on to the private safe zone policy. Dr. Armagan added that a restaurant and the Caribbean Smile Makers Dental Clinic, both located at Belleville St. Michael, will also be coming on stream. He told reporters that the safe zones are needed to get businesses up and running as he outlined how it will operate. So certainly in an outdoor environment like this, we would have some minimum requirements like tables six feet apart with people seated at them. A lot of the protocols right now, unfortunately, people are saying, oh, you need to have tables six feet apart. But then when you put someone in this chair and this chair, they're actually four feet apart. And with Delta, when I'm on mass drinking, chatting in a restaurant with a lot of noise and I'm speaking loudly, the aerosols I'm creating can spread in that distance. So we know that six feet is better. So one of the requirements would be in an outdoor space, you'd have to be six feet apart. In an indoor space, like an air-conditioned restaurant, store, or whatever, we're also going to insist that you have HEPA filtration or UVC lights in your filtration system. So if you want to be part of our zone, the business as a minimum requirement will have to put those things in place. On the consumer side now, so on the flip side, the person entering our safe zone, they'll stop at security, get your temperature done, uh, get sanitized. They're going to present their vaccine status to enter the zone. So they're going to have to say whether they're vaccinated or if they're unvaccinated, show a negative PCR test or take a test at the gate. If someone is coming into the zone and they have symptoms, whether vaccinated or not, they will be subjected to a test because the idea is as you know, even if you're vaccinated, you could potentially be carrying the virus. We understand that. We do understand, though, that if you're vaccinated, the chance of you spreading the virus is far less. We understand that you, the period of time that you spread the virus is five days versus 10 to 14 days. And we understand that the kind of virus you're spreading is not as horrible as in an unvaccinated case. So we understand that there's, there's a lot of benefit to being vaccinated. However, if a vaccinated person presents with symptoms, they will be tested or they will not be allowed entry to the safe zone. The hurricane season is now upon us. So we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Over in Guyana, the People's National Congress Reform opened its nomination for its upcoming elections at its Congress Place headquarters. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. Nominations rolled in from various party groups locally and abroad for the positions of party leader, chairman, vice chairs, and executive positions. In the race for party leader, nominations were submitted for former chairman Basil Williams, former general secretary Aubrey Norton, and the executive members Joe Harmon and Dr. Richard Van West Charles. Mr. Harmon, who currently serves as the opposition leader, indicated that he will be taking his campaign for the party leader position position across the country to the various party groups. I believe that as I go across this country, I feel that level of optimism. I feel that um, that energy which is coming out and I feel extremely confident that the team which I've put together under my leadership, that we are going to triumph in these elections. And after that, we have to basically work at bringing our party together, uniting our party so that we can actually basically fight the, the, the PPP, this installed PPP regime. Harmon believes that the PNC under his leadership will take a more commanding role in the efforts to unseat the incumbent government at the next elections. We believe that a strong, unified People's National Congress is critical to a strong AP and new AFC coalition, and that is critical to getting us back into office. I believe that is our ultimate objective. 
Captain back into office. Meanwhile, former General Secretary of the Party, Aubrey Norton, who is being backed for the position by most party groups, said he's already focused on the bigger picture and national development and the national movement. One of the advantages I think I have is that the People's Progressive Party knows full well that there is no illegality that they can go after me for, and therefore I can tell them as I think once it is true. And I think because you are fighting a criminal cabal in the PPP, people who I think even they themselves accept that they are corrupt, I think that will put me in a better position when it comes to the national uh, battle. On the issue of uniting the PNC and the coalition, Mr. Norton said there is a need for more involvement of the grassroots, and he knows how to get that done. I think I know more party comrades at a personal level because I've traveled the country and worked with them. I think also the fact that while I was a senior government official, party comrades could have accessed me because I was all over and all around. And if you know the People's National Congress reform, their supporters like to be in contact with the leadership. And that is why I said I would return the party to being a grassroots party in which the people in the party are in contact with the leadership and the leadership in contact with the people. Another candidate for party leader, Dr. Richard Van Ries Charles, believes his experience and political work over the years will do well in rebuilding the People's National Congress reform. What put me, puts me ahead is where I come to the table with my experience. My experience in terms of organizational development and management. Um, and I don't think that their track records can compare with mine. So I am uh, very clear, and as the campaign moves on, more will be unfolded. Dr. Van Ries Charles added that his track record shows that he has always been connected to the party and its members. I have a record as Minister of Health, uh, Housing, in terms of what I've just completed at GWI. I mean, I reached out to communities that existed that did not have basic access to water. So being with the grassroots doesn't mean being with them and only having a drink. You've got to be ready to be defending the quality of life to ensure that their quality of life can rise as the other sectors of society can rise. You've got to ensure that there are programs that will address their challenges for development. Because the party has to focus on development. By next week, all of the nominees for the various positions will be made public. And the campaign for delegate votes will continue in the lead up to the party's Congress and elections, which are set to take place in the month of December. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to food fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.